Lynn, speaking personally, the most haunting question I can ask myself is, why is there anything at all? Why is there something rather than nothing? These phrases become cliche after a while, but they're real. Well, there are different ways you can answer that. And, uh, if you're looking for meaning in, in your own life or your spirituality, you have one answer for that. From the physics point of view, we have, we have a, 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 a little bit interested. more technical answer. I'm not interested in spirituality. Okay. I'm interested in what's true. Well, I can tell you what, what's true. It may not tell you uh, what your role in the universe is, but uh, there's something rather than nothing because in physics, uh, nothing is not stable. That's because of quantum theory. Quantum theory tells us that uh, you've heard of the uncertainty principles, that, that, that uh, certain uh, quantities uh, cannot be defined si simultaneously within a, 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 a great precision. So if one of them is more precisely defined, the other one has to be less precisely Le defined. Like location and momentum like, of a particle. Like location and momentum. And the value of uh, everything, all the energy, all the different kinds of um, forces in nature uh, exist as fields in quantum theory. And the, the, these fields have the property of uh, having a certain value and also a certain change in value, which are something like energy and momentum. So the uh, uncertainty principle tells us that their value and their change in value can't both be precisely zero, can't be precisely uh, defined. So if they're zero now, then the change is going to be very large. So they're obviously going to get larger and so on. And this causes what we call quantum fluctuations. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the theories of quant quantum theory tells us today that if you, if you took a, a region of space and you, put, you took out all the energy and all the matter of it, that's what we call like nothingness, that would still have these fluctuations. Uh, that, 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 that it's like a boiling, bubbling cauldron of, of things that come in and out of existence extremely fast. And, and, and that's what empty space is. It's never really empty. It has these virtual particles coming in and out of existence. And that is um, not just a, uh, a speculation. I mean, that's part of, uh, for instance, of, of all our field theories and quantum electrodynamics, which has been measured to 10 decimal places, predicts that, and we've seen it. And we, ha we, have to, you, we have to take that into account when we do calculations to get the right answer. So that's a ver been a very well-established. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, um, most of you is quantum fluctuations. The, 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 uh, uh, a nucleus of an, um, uh, in the protons and nucleons and nuclei in, the, in your nuclei are made of quarks, but most of the mass of the proton and the mm -hmm. neutron comes from these fluctuations, not from the actual mass of the quarks right, themselves. Right. So you are mostly <laughs> n nothingness yourself. So, A lot of people tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea is that if there is nothing uh, as the initial state of the universe, whatever that means, that, 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 this, uh, that, that, um, that these quantum fluctuations would create something. Now, there's a little technicality there that I'll just mention briefly, which is that the energy, this only works if the total energy of the universe is zero. And general relativity tells us that that's only true if the universe is flat, if the geometry of the universe is flat. What does that mean? Oh, okay, so let's think about two dimensions instead of uh, our three-dimensional or space or, or space-time uh, because it's easier to visualize. So on two dimensions, what's flat is a tabletop, for instance, right? Uh, but there are other kinds of surfaces that, that you've seen. For instance, uh, a globe. A globe is a, the surface of, a, of the globe is a two-dimensional surface. Mm -hmm. It has curvature. It's called positive curvature. Mm -hmm. uh, it has no boundary. It's just uh, this outside of a sphere. So that's an example of curved two-dimensional space. A saddle has what's called negative curvature. That's an example of curved mm -hmm. uh, two-dimensional space as well. And the universe, it's three dimensions. So it's four with space-time, but the same ideas apply. It can have curvature. And, and the question is, is our universe flat? Because then it could have come from nothing. And there are different ways of attacking that question. One is that Einstein's theory tells us that if there's a certain amount of matter and energy density in the universe, that will cause a flat universe. When we look at that, the answer is yes. It seems to be that's the right amount that we have. The other is to just look at very big triangles in space and measure the number of the sum of the angles. Because the sum of the angles in a uh, in flat yeah. space yeah. on the tabletop are, is 180, 180 degrees. But if you draw a triangle on a globe, say you put a point on the uh, North Pole, and you draw down to the equator, you make a right angle, you follow the equator a little bit, and you go back up to the North Pole, you'll have two right angles along the equator, that's already your 180. Yeah. And then you have a little angle at the North Pole, which yeah. is more. So a positively curved space has more uh, than, than 180. By measuring huge triangles in space, we can see whether or not our space is flat. And within, uh, say, a percent, we've measured that, and it does, it is flat. So space is space, on the large scale structure of space is uh, flat. 
and the universe has a uh, total energy of zero because that means that the, the reason it's zero, even though there's things like us that have positive energy, there's negative energy due to gravity in a flat space. So that makes it come out to zero. Well, why is gravity negative energy? Um, well, th think about uh, something uh, that's, uh, um, uh, let's say, orbiting Earth. That has a certain uh, potential energy, mm -hmm. uh, which means if I let it go, it's going to fall to Earth and give off energy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Well, is this energy uh, positive or negative? Well, the question is, if it's infinitely away from Earth, it's going to have zero potential energy because uh, there's no force if you just keep going yeah, the yeah. further you go. So as you yeah. take it away, it's, it's, it, it, it's having zero force. But how do I get it there? I have to put energy in to push it away, yeah, right? right? So I'm, putting, I'm adding energy to it to bring it to zero energy. So that shows uh -huh. you that the energy uh -huh. was negative. Uh -huh. It's not quite that simple in general relativity, but that's one way you can okay. look at it. Okay. So, so the energy of the uh, is zero, which means that, that quantum fluctuations can turn nothing into something, and that's how our universe <laughs> and perhaps other universes got here. So th that is certainly consistent with everything we know about physics and, and really makes a great deal of sense. But the, the obvious question that you ask is that uh, your nothing is not my nothing. Your nothing is, has a lot of stuff. You have the uncertainty principle, you have energy, you have virtual particles, you have, you have fields of, uh, of, 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 of quantum uh, fields uh, that are expressing itself in all these different forces. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of stuff there. I, I, I want nothing. Your nothing is a, is, is a universe of stuff. Well, my nothing is a nothing. Um, th th those things aren't necessarily there, and, and, and depending on the theory that you're looking at, uh, different they could form uni different universes with different things there with different character. But but my nothing in, in physics is definitely always a mathematical definition of nothing, because physics is uh, mathematics. The theories of physics are phrased in mathematics. So when I say nothing in physics, I mean I need a framework of a theory to work in. I, I, I'm not talking philosophy. So when I say nothing in physics. I have to define what I mean by nothing within right. that mathematical framework. Right. And that's mathematical framework is quantum field theory. And, and that means that I'm, I am assuming that this nothing is a certain uh, mathematical state and that quantum principles apply. What, You're why saying, you why are there quantum principles? So, so physicists can't go beyond that. Physicists always start from a theory. If I said quantum principles apply because of the machki uh, principle, right. then you'd say, where's the machki come from? You know, the, 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 the final equation of all physics, I can tell you right now, the unified field theory of everything, it says X equals Y. All that's left to do is to tell me what's X and what's Y. But whatever it is, it's going to have that form, or it can be X equals zero, because you can yeah. subtract Y from both sides. Yeah. So, so, you're going to, so, so it's always going to be an equation, and you can always, whatever, whatever it comes out to be, you can say Y. And if I explain that in physics, I'll explain it with another equation or another principle, and you can say Y to that. So physics, by definition, can't go beyond that. So what I'm saying is, based on our knowledge now, quantum theory tells you that this will happen. And then you can just say, why quantum theory? And then that's for philosophers to think about. Yeah. Uh, and in, so in principle, you can't get beyond that. You can't get beyond a mathematical formulation, whether it's quantum theory or something deeper than that. Some ma mathematical formula you know, formulation framework or principle, mm -hmm. that, that's always what you start from in, in, in science. And, and how do you feel about that? How, how do you feel about it? answering the question why there is something rather than nothing by saying I have to assume that there are these mathematical formulations to begin with. Well, I'm not, I'm not necessarily assuming. I'm observing that they're oh, there. Okay. But then okay. you, if you want to say why are they there, yeah. um, that's okay because I don't require that physics or science explains everything. Uh, it's okay that there are things that, that aren't explained by it that we have to think about uh, in other ways. There, there's, there's no reason that, I mean, I, 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 it's a limitation of physics, I suppose. And, um, and even if Einstein had his way, and uh, we found uh, because of logic, mm -hmm. because 1 plus 1 equals 2, yeah. that means that quantum theory must exist, yeah, yeah. you could still say, why does, one, you know, why does logic exist? So yeah. let's take it beyond, say yeah. we explain all of math by the basic yeah. points of, of arithmetic. Yeah. But then you could still say, why, why arithmetic? And I think, I think it was Descartes who questioned that. Descartes said that, uh, I think he thought that uh, God did not have the power to change the laws of physics, but mm. he did have the power to change the laws of mathematics. <laughs> and interest, interesting, maybe <laughs> because uh, maybe I'm not sure if he felt that he was a mathematician or a physicist, but uh, that, that was his view. Mm -hmm.